Hey girls and gals, my name is Taylor and welcome back to my channel for another weekly reading vlog. I am fresh off of my last reading vlog, which um, is already up on my channel. It was my 24 hour reading vlog to celebrate the first day of fall. So happy official second day of fall now, um, or you know, whenever you're watching this, happy fall. It was definitely a mixed bag of reading. I um, read four books technically five, but I was like in the middle of one. I completed four books during that readathon, all horror. Um, I really did not like one, like really did not like. Um, the other two were solid reads and then one I really enjoyed and would probably recommend. So, um, you know, definitely a mixed bag. I was hoping for some more stellar, like wow, amazing reads to kick off fall, but that was probably on me maybe hyping, um, hyping the event up, but I had a lot of fun. So go check that out if you haven't seen that vlog already, but um, because I am old and tired and, just you know the 24 the 24 hour vlog really took a lot out of me i'm tired i even fell asleep during the middle of it like i didn't even stay up the whole entire 24 hours but we're switching it back to regularly scheduled weekly reading vlogs so that is what we're going to be doing still going to be reading a lot of horror because i found like a little rabbit hole that i want to go down um one of the books that i ended up reading for the 24 hour readathon was a part of like the republic publishing of old horror paperback classics. Um, Grady Hendrix, he wrote the book Paperbacks from Hell, which is awesome nonfiction if you're looking for some horror nonfiction for this fall. Um, but he is also like helping, well, not him personally, but I think like he's helping make the selections. Like there are a number of vintage paper books being republished um, under the Paperbacks from Hell imprint. Um, so that's very exciting. I read one of those um, during the readathon and it was so much fun. It was so much fun. It was very campy. It was just like very straightforward and fun in a way where um, I really like conceptual horror. I really like, you know, what everyone's calling elevated horror nowadays. Like I am a fan of that. Don't get me wrong. I really enjoy it. It also was fun just to read a book where it was like, this is going on. This is what's happening. There's no purple prose. There's like not a lot of heavy metaphor and like you really have to like dissect and analyze every single thing that's going on it's just you get what you get and it's a horror filled time so it was a lot of fun so i'm probably going to maybe pick up another one of those books during this weekly reading vlog if not definitely picking some up in october for sure because that was a lot of fun other than that my current read is the book that i did not get to finish for the 24 hour readathon um this was a book that i kind of picked up as a backup just in case i really um i was feeling discouraged after my first two reads and knew that like an author that I had read from before would be a good backup book in case I just really could not find anything. Luckily, I managed to turn the vlog back around, but I now that I've read like 20 pages of this, I, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep reading it. So this is my current read, Stephen King's from a Buick 8. This is a haunted car um, story about a Buick 8. Um, and that's all I really know about it so far because again, 20 pages in. So looking forward to reading this. This is the book I'm gonna start out the vlog with, but we all know the drill by now. I'm a mood reader, so we'll just see what else I'm going to be reading this week. Definitely in the darker fantasy or horror mood for sure. That's that's what we're gonna be getting into today. So um, yes, happy Sunday. Happy second day of fall, everyone. I am going to go get to reading and I will talk to you all later.
friends happy wednesday um yeah i didn't update monday or tuesday because honestly i did not read that much i got really obsessed with the past couple days i've been watching on netflix juan origins which um juan is the japanese version or i shouldn't say version um the grudge is the english version or the english remake of juan so juan origins is a japanese um written directed produced like it is in japanese i watched it with english subtitles but it's a limited series so there's only eight episodes and it's the origins of juan um you don't need to have watched the grudge or anything like that to enjoy this um but yeah it was like very drama filled there were there were some very creepy scenes there's also like a lot of like disgusting scenes as well very fascinating stuff um i recommend if you check it out don't try the dubbed version i prefer subs usually i do like to kind of check out the english dub just to see because i know some people who can't or don't want to um you know read subtitles and that's totally you know personal preference but um this one is bad so i don't like it i don't think the voices match the characters at all so um yeah i just i would just would check it out if you're able to if you like horror limited series that are pretty creepy um then i think that you would really like joan origins um i know i did i watched it pretty much i started it on the treadmill one day and then i just kept watching and watching and watching um until i finished eight episodes very fascinating it starts off a little bit confusing um because there are multiple timelines um in the first episode it might get a little confusing just figuring out like who belongs where in terms of the story and the narrative and like what time segment they're from but once you figure that out it's very very intriguing so yeah that's been kind of what i've been doing after work um on the treadmill like normally places where i would be reading so not a huge reading update but i do still have a reading update for you guys i'm still reading from a buick a um this just seems like it is going to be another haunted car story which is great because i i like christine i'm sure this isn't going to be as good as christine um one can imagine i don't know i i feel like this won't be able to top christine but um yeah this is you know another haunted car story we're following what's interesting about this one is that christine though um christine is being taken care of by a high schooler and we're following his friend and trying to figure out if there's something wrong with the car if it's just like changes in his friend this one you know pretty much from page one um that this buick 8 is haunted so um yeah interesting stuff i'm in enjoying it and then I also picked up for a little bit of a change of pace Madalena in the dark and this is by Julia Fine this is a dark academia ish sort of story I would say it takes place in Venice in 1717 and we're following two girls Louisa and Madalena Louisa has always lived at this it's essentially an orphanage it's a music conservatory but it's just for unwanted or orphaned girls she lives there that's her only chance is to become good at a instrument good enough to leave this orphanage and perform and then madalena is kind of carted off there after a scandal in her well-to-do family um and just put in this place where she feels like she doesn't belong and these two girls form a very interesting friendship and get to know each other i believe this is sapphic but the dust jacket says it's a venetian fairy tale about the friendship between two girls and the boundless desire that will set them free if it doesn't consume them first um i'm not very far in this one i'm only about 15 percent there is some sort of like magical element to this i think so um very very atmospheric so far i think if you're a music lover you're really gonna like this because um it definitely they definitely talk a lot about music they talk about like how emotion influences music and just like the love of music the duty of music for these girls um and kind of learning to love that to play an instrument while also knowing um for most of the girls in the situation that becoming good at it is your only way of getting out of the situation so um yeah these are my two current reads um i don't know if i'll be able to update tomorrow or not i'll probably have a lot of reading time i'm planning on not working as much tomorrow because um obi gets fixed tomorrow he heard his name and he stopped chewing on his bone and he's looking at me he has no idea obviously um but he likes the vet so it shouldn't be too much of a hassle like getting him there which is good so that's first thing in the morning i'm dropping him off and then i think the procedure usually takes a 
about like an hour I want to say for like the procedure and them to monitor him right afterwards. I know it takes less time for boys than girls. I'm not like the most well versed in spaying and neutering but um, yes Obi's getting his surgery tomorrow so um, I'm going to have to kind of monitor him all day um, and make sure the biggest thing that I'm worried about is not um, him necessarily but um, our other dog they like playing together we're gonna have to keep them separated so I'll be focusing on that and also um, it specifically says no strenuous activities but Obi loves to jump like he's just like a jumpy little guy um, he jumps with happiness um, like when we're feeding him he does little hops around his bowl um, and does like little hops um, a lot of the time frequently he's like a little baby bunny like that way but um, you can't do that it specifically says like no jumping or strenuous activity while he is healing up so um, I'm gonna have to try and monitor that in some fashion tomorrow as well so he's probably going to be a little bit sleepy a little bit out of it for at least part of the day so I'll probably get some reading and then I'm gonna be like watching him like a hawk so maybe some audiobook reading but if I don't update tomorrow um that's that's what's happening so either tomorrow night when my partner gets home and he can take over OB duty or um on Thursday or no not Thursday tomorrow's Thursday already wow I feel like once it hits the end of September the year just flies by like that um and especially now like working from home the day's kind of kind of blend together um at least for me i will update you on friday if um if i don't tomorrow so you know working my way through a horror dark academia definitely feeling the fall vibes i already have my october tbr out um i think by the time you watch this honestly it'll probably be october um but a lot of those on my october tbr were holds from the library i was not expecting to get them so soon and i got a lot of them um within the past few days so i'm really tempted to start some of them sooner than october i don't know we'll have to see we'll have to see i think maybe i'll try and focus on finishing one of these before picking up yet another book because i'm also working on another book back there for a another book video and then i also have my buddy read of vampires of el norte with my mom so you know i'm technically working my way through four books so that's probably enough um i'll probably just want to finish one of these before moving on to the next but that is today's update um just kind of gonna try and get as much done as i can today so that tomorrow i can be a full-time ob nurse um so yes that's today's little update um i might have a more substantial update tomorrow or friday we'll just have to see i will talk to y'all later been an absolute week um i don't know how much b-roll footage i have in here i don't know how much you can kind of see him tottering around in the back either um but <laughs> yeah i hope we got fixed it has been just such a week i truly don't know like what i would have done had it not been for the fact that like I work at home now like that has been so convenient and let me tell you um it is like a thousand percent harder getting your second dog fixed 
in getting your first dog fixed because the first one um you don't have another dog trying to rile the dog up and play rough with his little brother um and not realize why they have to be separated um the first day was pretty much both of them were whining all day once Obi got home from the vet because um, Bruce wanted to see him. Obi wanted to see Bruce. They were kept apart by um, like our little puppy gate and they were not about it. They're still not about it. We're slowly introducing them to each other again just so they can um, just lay down and relax and learn to not rough house with each other like right now it's saturday by the way um oh we got all this done on thursday so today's the first day where we felt comfortable i'm right here they're both like at my feet i can see them while i'm filming this but today's the first day we've done that where we've allowed them just to be in the same room together um and like took them out at the same times together just to make sure that um you know a well-intentioned big brother doesn't open up open up the stitches of the surgery area and that little brother stays calm and isn't um inspired to play more roughly like his big brother can do so that's been a lot and i'm sorry for the ambient noise that i'm sure you can hear but obi is chewing on a bone and i'm not taking that away from him because he's laying down while he's doing it so we need that so i'm not taking that away so hopefully you can't hear it too too loudly it is very noisy but hopefully it's one of those things where i just can hear it more than you guys can we'll see like i predicted not a lot of updates but i did finish two books so um yes madalena in the dark i really enjoyed this one this one definitely i would recommend too i saw i think on the back that this was for fans of the invisible life of Addie larue um and i would agree if you like that story if you like those kind of themes if you like those like fantastical yet still set in the real world this one takes place solely in one place in time and doesn't have the immortal life that Addie larue does um but if you liked the invisible life of Addie larue then you probably would enjoy this one too i flew through it i loved it, it i i really enjoyed it again this is like very dark academia adjacent um we've got like those sort of themes like the the passion and the studying and the figuring out what you can make of your life like what versus what you want your life to be and that's particularly present here in 1717 venice so um yes i enjoyed it i enjoyed louisa i enjoyed madalena and very fascinating and atmospheric i absolutely loved reading it and and I just, I really, really breezed through this one. And then I was pleasantly surprised by From A Buick 8. This is one, this is a Stephen King book where I had not heard about it like at all um, before picking it up at a used bookstore and it's a fairly decent fairly solid stephen king read honestly might be a good place to start i feel like it has a good blend of um some of the things that he, he does really well i feel in terms of narratives back and forth narratives stories within stories there's two different time eras then and now and the now section of this is taking place within primarily a single conversation in an afternoon which is interesting so that was interesting definitely had like an interesting very strange supernatural almost paranormal otherworldly sort of magic going on with an enchanted item this one being a buick 8 that probably isn't a buick 8 um and so yeah i really enjoyed it you know maybe if you have this on your shelf for whatever reason or you can check it out at your library um this might be a good introduction to stephen king um because it's fairly short as well and kind of does um i don't think this adds like anything new I think the aspects that I liked in this I can also find in other stories of his um but I thought this was just like very well done I felt like this could even be like a very good short story if you narrowed it down just a little bit more and it could have been a really good short story in a short story collection but I had a good time reading this um it's not going to be one that sticks with me forever um but I found it very readable and I thought the ending was pretty good as well so um yes reading these and um, watching my dog has pretty much been all that I've been doing. And of course, now that I've updated on the books that I was reading, he stops chewing his bone. So we love that timing for us. But yeah, it's it's the last day of September. Um, and I've pretty much kind of decided that I'm not going to try and rush through and finish any more books in the month of September. Um, you know, if I finish one, I finish one because it's still pretty early in the morning. 
um, on the last day of September, but um, if I don't, that's fine too. And also, I've been getting in some of my October books that I wanted to read in the month of October um, from the library already, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe starting one of those. So I'll just do a quick little shout out to the two books that I'm reading currently um, that I probably won't finish until October, which is totally fine. An audiobook and a physical book, or rather ebook since I'm reading it on my phone. But the first one is Stolen Tongues and the second one is Last Days. And Last Days is by Adam Neville. I've read by that author before. The other one is by Felix something. Blackwell. Um, Stolen Tongues is about this couple. They go to this cabin in the middle of the Colorado wilderness and um, there's something that's talking to them outside the cabin. And Felix, who is the author, um, also the main character in the story, um, his wife is talking back to these voices in her dreams. Very creepy. Um, this one I think was a creepy pasta originally, um, or it was like a submission on the Reddit subreddit No Sleep. So um, it does very much have those vibes, that feeling. So we'll see how um, I enjoy it. Um, I've, I've tended to notice a lot of these things that are adapted from an original thing that did really well. Sometimes the original is just better than the adaptation. And I'm not even talking about just like Reddit posts and books, but a lot of times the initial success of something it's hard to replicate it and what made it so successful in another form um whether that be books to movies or movies to books or books to tv shows vice versa any of those and then the last days by adam neville this is about a down on his luck filmmaker he gets the opportunity of a lifetime to film this very interesting documentary about this cult um, and the benefactors mysterious. It's an offer too good to be true, but our main character cannot say no to this offer even though it feels too good to be true because he has so much debt, he doesn't have a project at the moment to work on, and it seems very interesting because it is about this cult that um, ran in both the UK and the US at some time. So he's actually with a small knit group of his friends filming um, and interviewing people and making this documentary. So this book kind of has like a found footage feel, which is super cool. So that's what I'm working on right now. Honestly, this week I have gotten so back into Neopets Blast from the Past. Um, they're making a comeback actually, which which is pretty cool because, um, you know, from like the years 2000 to 2006, like pretty much all of my grade school time, um, that was like what I did. That was my gaming. I learned basic HTML programming and like web coding from Neopads. I was on it all the time. Um, and unfortunately, my account did not survive um, the several iterations that Neopets has gone through, but I do have a new account and I've been playing on it. Um, it's just been really nice. I've specifically been playing the Sacrament Solitaire um, while I'm listening to an audiobook. So that's been something where it's like just very like mindless fun while I'm observing my dogs, making sure that they're doing good, they're not getting into mischief, reading, and then just, you know, playing a game. Um, so yeah, that's been fun. That's been my weekend as an almost 30 year old. Um, I started this morning, like it felt very, very nostalgic, waking up on a Saturday, um, taking care of the dogs and then logging onto neopets.com. That was, that was healing my inner child. So <laughs> I'm probably just gonna do more of that. So yeah, that's absolutely what I'm going to be doing. Um, honestly, probably for the rest of the afternoon. Um, my partner had to go into work today, he, just doing some research in the lab. So that's what he's doing this afternoon. So it's just me and the dogs. But yeah, I've just, I felt like a hot mess this whole entire week. So a laid back Saturday, it's absolutely the way to go. Um, I need, I need to take a shower, <laughs> like very bad. I just feel like um, I just, I've, I just feel like I smell like a dog. Um, not that that's any different than probably what I normally smell like because, um, you know, my dogs and I hang out all the time, don't we? It's definitely a mostly hair up kind of day. Um, just it's, it's been busy and I've been cramping and just, it's been a lot, so. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to listen to an audiobook. I don't know if it will be Stolen Tongues because I'm really trying to scare myself in the month of October um, because I, I haven't found a horror book in a while. I love horror books. Um, I have so many like five stars and books that I love. 
Um, there haven't been like that many horror books I could, that I can think of in recent memory where I've been like genuinely scared. Um, so I've been trying to like do like the whole like audiobooks at night sort of thing um, to see if maybe that scares me a little bit more. Um, so I might save Stolen Tongues for this evening, but I'm gonna go pick out an audiobook, listen to an audiobook, play some solitaire, and I will talk to y'all later. happy second day of October. Happy Monday. Yesterday was the first day of October. Very exciting stuff for us Halloween lovers. Um, yeah, it's been a crazy week. This vlog is going to be very, very strange and segmented, I'm sure, and like jumping all over the place, but Obi's doing good. We're all doing good. It was just like, it's it's been a lot. He's doing good though. I've been reading a lot, just um, haven't been updating as much. So in terms of reading updates, yesterday I DNF stolen tongues. I just was not, I was not vibing with, um, I just wasn't really vibing with the book. Um, it was it was okay, it was good, not great. And then it just ran into some like really bizarre um, indigenous representation that was like harmful. But then the author's like making a point to be like, I'm not like other white authors to like, say that he's having good representation, which is kind of a little bit strange. Um, so it just DNF'd. I'm not, I'm not interested in that. If I want to read a horror book with questionable indigenous representation, I am, I'll probably just go read a book that was written in like the 80s, you know? My standards are definitely a whole lot higher for books that are written in the 2000s than, you know, decades and decades before. So, um, DNFing that, not a fan of it. I did like the prologue and I have a hunch that the prologue was the original no sleep story because it felt like a no sleep story and it was good it was short there was an ending that was like oh, at the end um like i don't know how to describe it but like there's like very specific styles of like no sleep endings um if you've ever read on that reddit um before but i feel like the prologue was the original story um and then the author tried to like flesh it out and i just just for a lot of reasons, DNFing. Um, it didn't work for me, but um, I know it has worked for a lot of people. So. so that was my first reading update. Didn't love starting October with a DNF, but I would have rather DNF'd it than like push through another five hours of the audiobook. So next book that I'm currently reading is going a whole lot better. And that is Last Days by Adam Neville. Um, and this one, I have read multiple things by this author before, and we have kind of a complex relationship with each other, <laughs> a parasocial, definitely a parasocial complex relationship because he doesn't know I exist. But um, I have read uh, No One Gets Out Alive and The Ritual. Both of those stories I thought had five star premises, um, but were both about like 200 pages too long. Um, the ritual, I thought the first two segments were really good. Like the first two thirds of the book, solid, solid, so solid. And then it makes a very strange turn that I did not like. Um, and then for No One Gets Out Alive, that one, um, I enjoyed it all the way through. There wasn't like anything at the end that I didn't like, but it was like 500 pages long. Um, I felt like it could have been shorter and I would have enjoyed it more. That being said, the ritual movie adaptation, I think is a really, really good adaptation. Um, that is one where I would say that they're both on par with each other and I think I almost like the movie a little bit more. I am planning on watching the movie adaptation of No One Gets Out Alive this month. So we'll see how I feel about that. But this is my third book by this author. Another premise that I was super stoked about and forgive me if I'm repeating things because I'm not actually sure. Like I haven't been like editing my vlog as I've been going along like I usually do. So there might be some repetition, but Last Days is about a down in his luck filmmaker who gets the opportunity that he has been looking for to create a movie with his two friends with almost complete 
creative control. There's just a very strict itinerary that he has to stick to. Um, the people that are hiring him to do this have already set up all the interviews, all the locations, all the dates, paying for travel. He just has to go to location by location by location and basically essentially um, film a documentary about a cult. So this like this one this one is for my found footage lovers um, because we go into detail about how we have our two main characters the other like member of their trio stays at home and does video editing so we haven't actually seen so much of him yet but our two main characters Dan and Kyle are filming um, and catching some strange things on footage so it goes through the entire process as they're like going through the locations filming what they think is just like some back background ambiance setting up the scene to talk about this cult um get some interviews things start just so creepy so i am really enjoying it so far i'm about 30 percent of the way through this one um and this one the pacing feels a lot better than the past two books that i've read by this author but i'm really enjoying it so far i love found footage um i think maybe some of the description of everything they do all of their setup takedown with all of the equipment might get a little tedious if we're going to keep on talking about it every single time about what cameras they're packing how they're setting up what shots they're going to take i think that's interesting this author loves to add a description where maybe he doesn't need to add all the description but i don't mind this is very creepy so far i was getting genuinely creeped out like definitely definitely feels like kind of like a found footage and i would love to see an adaptation of this one because i'm really enjoying it so far so that is i'm reading it on my phone so i do want to pick up a physical book Book as well because um, while well, my job um, I'm staring at a computer all day um, I don't want to have all of my reading this week be done staring at a screen because I am reading the ebook version of this book through my library so I do want to pick up a physical book as well haven't decided which one that is yet but um, I'll be picking up a physical book also maybe an audiobook we'll see I just don't want to have my only book this week be like me staring at a screen when I've been staring at a screen all day because of my job so that's the big reading update last night kicked off my watching a horror movie every single night um and we started on a very very strange note um come true it's on hulu it's about a young woman who signs up for this sleep study because she's been having nightmares and also doesn't have like a steady place to spend the night so this is like the perfect solution for everything um and something very strange starts going on with both uh, her nightmares becoming more vivid and maybe bleeding over into her day-to-day -day life this has what i think the writers and directors wanted to be a Shyamalan ending it was a choice <laughs> interesting ride but um yeah not not my favorite but definitely definitely an interesting one to watch for the very first day of october so that is my little reading update for today um i'm gonna go get back to work and i will check back in maybe a little bit later tonight if i've picked up another book or tomorrow just with some more reading updates for y'all It is now time to wrap up this vlog. I just think today is a pretty good day to end it because I've been editing my vlog. It's at a good vlog length. So even though it is the middle of the week, we're just gonna we're just gonna end it here. It was definitely a very crazy week with um the dog things and everything going on but i did you know i did read a lot so that's always good and today is actually like the first day it sort of feels like fall um so that's also very good it is currently very dark and stormy outside which is awesome but that's why I like the lighting's a little bit dark but anyway i did finish whale fall um i don't think i mentioned this one at all um before you know this update here but i did pick it up as an audiobook um two days ago i think 
two days ago, one day ago, I'm not sure what is time. I picked it up on a day that was not today and it was okay. It definitely was not, um, I probably would not have picked it up had I known maybe exactly um, what the premise was going to be about. I knew it was aquatic horror um, and I didn't know. I thought it was going to be maybe more along the lines of the deep or into the drowning deep, um, both aquatic horror books that I love. However, it does say like even on the blurbs of this book that it is like an underwater version of The Martian and survival horror is just um, not typically like a genre or like survival fiction is not typically a genre I enjoy. So um, yeah, that was my bad going into this. If you do like survival stories, um, this is probably um, going to be a good pick for you. I know a lot of people are loving this one. It is about a man who goes down and dives into the ocean to retrieve his father's remains. His father has died by suicide. They had a very, very tough relationship. Um, and it's, it's kind of like a coming to terms moment. Um, our main character kind of feels like a lot rests on both his father's legacy as a diver and then also just retrieving remains um, for his family and for closure for himself and the relationship with his father. So um, he dives down to the ocean to try and find these remains. He gets swallowed by a whale, has to survive. So that's that's this book. If you enjoy survival stories, I think you're really gonna love this one. I saw in a lot of reviews that a ton of people who are very sciencey, especially in like the marine biology world are loving this one because it's so scientifically accurate. So if you love survival stories, if you love, like this is I feel like kind of a horror and a science fiction. If you love science fiction, that's like very, very grounded in actual science. Um, and this probably is going to work out really really well for you it just it just didn't work for me but that again my bad I just I don't tend to enjoy survival horror I thought it was going to be something a little bit different but I did think it was good for what it was um, just it's not a story I typically tend to enjoy so please don't let my non enjoyment of this book dissuade you from picking up the book it was it was me it was me not the book so um, if you enjoy survival stories underwater stories sci-fi horror that's very science-based you might really like whale fall um, and then the other book that I'm still reading still loving last days by Adam Neville and this one I'm about 50% of the way through so that's really exciting this one is very much creeping me out we've got that found footage vibes quite honestly after I wrap up this vlog I am going to go cuddle up with some blankets with the pups and read it because I just I, I can't wait to see what happens next. It's very spooky, very creepy. I'm very much enjoying my time reading it. Um, I think those are the two major updates that I have. It is October 4th right now. Me and my partner have still managed to watch a horror movie every single day. Last night we watched, um, well actually I'm not sure um, what kind of updates that I've given yet on that because again this vlog is all over the place but um, we've been watching the Nightmare on Elm Street series. They're all on HBO Max. Um, if you have that subscription service. Um, I've seen them before. I really like it. It's one of my favorite horror franchises. My partner's never seen them before, so that's been very, very fun. Um, we are, we finished four last night, um, which is not my favorite, not my least favorite of the series. Least favorite is probably going to be the one that we're probably going to watch tonight, which is um, Dream Child, so... Yeah, just a, just a little update on the horror movies. Um, this, you know, my vlogs are primarily for books, talking about bookish things, but um, just like a little self promo plug for my Instagram, which is also Herbivore Haunts. Um, I do talk and like post like movie reviews and such on there as well, alongside bookish content. So yeah, that is going to be it for this week's reading vlog. Thank you all so, so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, subscribe to my channel for all of the bookish and cozy gaming content. Stay safe, stay spooky, and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye!